First Watch Now. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. First Watch on 92.3 KWCD. And it's brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your Sheriff's Office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and Sheriff Mark Daniels. Good morning. Good morning, Cochise County. Hello, everyone. So tonight we're kicking off Cochise County football, and this year it's right here on KWCD. Well, I think you said it best, Grady. Country, music, and football. Uh Uh-huh. Carrie Underwood like is the spokesman for that thought you know (laughs) and i say that in a good way and so yeah i'm glad we're on 92.3 we're excited about tonight and so we're going to be going to benson high school tonight where the bobcats are going to host tombstone yellow jackets so it's and people say well that's a 2a conference school well actually benson went up to 3a they're they've had a very successful um seasons over the last five six years in fact runner up in state the last two years so they've done really well so when you do have success in football they put you up so now they're going to 3a tombstone is going to go up there it's going to be a tough game uh for tombstone i mean but then again benson lost a lot of seniors last year so it'll be a good game either way so we're kicking off preseason or pregame at 6 30 and the game kicks off at seven and i want to remind everybody that you do call the games uh sheriff daniels is calling the games right out there and you're very good at it now thank you well, I've got better. I don't know about good. We're, we're striving for good. Someday we'll see great. But uh, I, we'll, we'll, let's just strive for good. Let's just say it that way. So, again, it, it's exciting for us to do that. And this is our way to showcase our student athletes throughout Cochise County. The following week or two weeks, we're going to be in for the pick with Bisbee High School and Douglas. That's a game. That's a game. Yeah. I mean, in fact, last year we had a conflict. We didn't get that game in. And so... Some of the, a lot of the busy uh, fans down there were giving me a bunch of heck about that. So I said, we'll be back. We're going to make sure that happens. So we're going to be down there in two weeks uh, to do that game. So we're excited. It's a good season to get back in there. And a uh, thing that we're going to start uh, talking a lot about is a jail district. So there is now a committee that has been put together that is going to uh, represent the community. And then they're going to go to the Board of Supervisors to prevent to see or present to see if we're going to get a jail district or not. Now, they meet every other Friday. So today's their second meeting. And then after the meetings on Wednesday in the Sierra Vista Herald, there's going to be a a piece put out by Eric Peterman of SSVEC, and he's going to let everybody know what happened the prior week so everybody can keep uh, in touch with with this because we want the citizens to really see what's going to be happening here. So what we're going to do is we're going to play. Eric Peterman came in and recorded his story so we can hear it. It's about a minute and a half. And then, Sheriff, you're going to kind of reiterate or talk about what you'd like to. Right. All right, so here's Eric Peterman. And the title of his uh, article that appeared this past Wednesday is Jail District Committee Serves Your Interests. Members of a task force appointed and approved by Cochise County officials are charged with making a recommendation on whether to form a jail district. The committee met for the first time Friday, August 5th, and is expected to meet no less than six more times into October. Each of the meetings will offer information on the current issues surrounding the existing jail, including presentations from the Sheriff's Department, consultants who are expected to outline financial and building concerns, along with others who explain all that is involved in forming a jail district. Members of the committee carry impressive credentials and represent old-school influencers in their respective communities. Unlike modern personalities who promote ideas and products on YouTube, committee members are accessible fellow citizens who have volunteered to contemplate and make a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors on the formation of this special taxing district. You are encouraged to reach out to these community members with your questions, concerns, or ideas on this issue. The roster includes council members, a former sheriff, a retired judge, and others with experience in health care, state government service, law enforcement, and other professions. To make sure the committee stays on topic, doesn't vary from its public agenda, and to protect the integrity of the proceedings, task force meetings are attended by no less than two attorneys. This includes County Administrator Richard Karwashka and a counselor from the civil side of the County Attorney's Office. Despite all of this representation and deliberation, it is you, the voting public, who will ultimately decide the fate of this question. Committee members will voice their opinion on whether to recommend the formation of a jail district to the Board of Supervisors. Board members will then decide whether to schedule a special election limited to a referendum on forming the district. If the process carries through to a referendum, which is essentially a yes or a no vote, it is expected a special election would be held in May 2023. 
Follow these procedures and don't be shy about expressing your opinion. The Herald Review has graciously agreed to publish these editorials reporting on the bi-weekly meetings of the task force without compromising discussions that are held in closed session. If you know a member of the committee, reach out with your questions or concern. Or, if you prefer, send your comments to epeterman1 at gmail.com. So, as you can see, this is supposed to be a very transparent situation. So, Sheriff? Well, and we appreciate uh, the service to Harold. We appreciate Eric Peterman. He's got such a bold voice, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Saying? Not like mine. But... Um, we appreciate him on putting this out there like that because we've worked over the last couple of years and beyond uh, Commander Bradshaw and my team to put the facts on the table and prepare the public for what we're uh, pushing for, and that is a new jail. Jails last 20 years. We're pushing 40 years with this jail, so we've got two lives out of this jail. But we want to make sure the facts are on the table because this is the community jail. It's their jail. It's not the sheriff's jail. By statute, I have a mandate to uh, run it, but it's a community jail. So we want to make sure that the information, this new uh, committee that's formed, is an outreach committee for the public. And that's why it's got diversity built within. So we're excited about that. We're excited to, uh, to keep this committee informed. And then they will come out within the public and the board and everybody to say this is what's going on and here's our recommendation. So, again, I think we've done a very good job. Kudos to the county administrator, Rich Karwaska, my team, and everybody that's been working on this to, to do the right thing to the pub, for the public and getting this information out there. So, again, I'm excited. And once they get this whole thing done, everyone's going to see um, – the necessity of it but also you know trying to let everybody know that there's going to be so much more going into it so much um, more of a resource and an asset for the whole county and there was a story on channel 9 last night about the mental health program and how it impacts our detention facilities as well so I want to make sure that that everyone understands it's not just a matter of you know the old city jail you take them in there you lock them up this is not Mayberry um, there's a lot of other things that we need to do and we do appreciate all of the people that are working so hard to get this off the ground yeah we got to get out of the mindset alcatraz is a tourist attraction for a reason it's a, seriously the way they ran alcatraz back in the 40s 50s and 60s is not how we run jails today our challenges have changed and our our jail again 40 years old i mean it wasn't built it was built for modern times in, in the 80s but it's not mil, built for modern times currently in 2022 so yeah we um we're excited about where it needs to go we're excited about the feedback that we're getting, and, and I tell people this, and I, I told this to an individual the other day, a, a government leader, that we have to prioritize. Uh, people like to for, forget jails. Wow, they need to be stuck down there. Bottom line is, in a rural community like ours, I mean, there's not. you probably know somebody's been in our jail, family member, neighbor, friend. Uh, and you want to make sure they're in the best situation they can. And that's what our jails are all about, is safeguarding people. But you got to have the right infrastructure to do it. So, again, we're excited. And also we're excited because uh, you guys can be a part of this team as well because we are still hiring detention officers. And uh, you can start at 18 years old. All you need is your high school diploma or GED. And you're, you're in to law enforcement. And then if you're planning to go deputy, you can do that at 21. That's right, because it puts you into a retirement system, great benefits package. We have an education reimbursement program that we push push here at the sheriff's office. So there's a lot of advantages. And, and uh, I used to tell my wrestlers when I coached was, you know, what an opportunity for an 18-year-old. Get into a government job. Get into a retirement system. We'll help pay for your education. Not a bad deal. Um, so, again, we're hiring at the jail. We're hiring as deputies. And we're pretty excited, in fact, bringing that up, Grady. We, we're testing here in a week or so. We have 48 people testing for deputies deputy sheriff so again uh, we appreciate the community we appreciate them wanting to work here and so again uh, the we're doing a good job there I mean I know there's a lot of challenges out there where people can't hire but so far we're staying above the edge on that well last week you did a, a community event called dancing like the stars and actually um, I made a comment to be in the show uh, uh, Jeff and I uh, emceed that and but I made the comments it's like dancing like Sierra Vista I mean, because it was they brought back all the alumni from previous, and it was really neat the way they did that. And so people were just spending. Let me just say, a lot of that's the Realtors Association, Realtors from throughout Sierra Vista and beyond, that really put that on and come in there and uh, support that. And let me tell you, thanks to our Realtors here. I mean, if you know a Realtor, thank them because they were there. They were spending some money for a great cause because Real Wishes puts that on. 
and to help people in need, putting roofs on houses, whatever it may be. And they raised over 62000 It's a record for them. And so it was a good night. They should have raised even more than that. Um, just people need to reach out and try to find the video of the dancers because they were doing such a good job. But if you did not see County Attorney Brian McIntyre doing Pulp Fiction, I'm telling you, you're missing something. Yeah. You have to look out and see that one. Brian's got some moves. Right? We thought he only had moves in the courtroom. But, no, he's got some moves on the floor, too. And But it's just a nice event because it, just so many people coming together. It was sold out. It just shows you this. This is such a giving community. You know, all the inflation, high costs. I get it. I respect it. It's frustrating. But the reality is when it comes to a charitable events, people come together to give. So it was a nice event. And some of the things that we were also working on um, this week, we had a cable meeting this week and met with that whole group and other law enforcement and i think it was pretty productive it is our, our cable group is again it's an outreach group of citizens throughout cochise county that meet with law enforcement the chiefs the sheriffs the county attorney and and we discuss different things different challenges different updates and it was a good meeting i mean i just it's nice to have them as a representation within our communities throughout cochise county that they can express their concerns too if they have them, uh, what challenges we're dealing with, the border, for example, you name it. But uh, it's nice knowing that they're there for us. And but they're not there. They're not there. They can call us out too. If they think we're doing something wrong, sheriff, we don't like this. They let me know. I mean, it's great to have that. And that was a a program that Brian McIntyre uh, kicked off with the police chiefs about a year and a half ago, I think it was. And so it's. I'm happy to have him on board. And it has an educational component, too, because um, the chairperson is Judge Conlog, and he always provides, a, I guess, a legal overview, which is nice because you have it from a layperson standpoint. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of experience, a lot of life experience within that group. I mean, these aren't people that are, don't know what they're talking about. They're very good. They have some kind of influential connection to the community that they share back with law enforcement. So it opens up our lenses, too. To We learn something every meeting. So thank you to the cable members. Well, bees are the good guys. We need bees. But we had a, an incident that uh, got some people stung this week. Angry bees, Grady. These are angry mm. bees. <laughs> let, let me just say, I was talking, Carol and I were talking to one of the, the bee guys here in the county, and he was saying how angry the bees are. And I say that because of him. And but we did. We had a, a sad situation uh, on the middle of the county, where a, uh, two individuals were tearing down a building, and uh, bees came at them and s stung the heck out of them. In fact, our deputy got there and actually put his gas mask on, got his fire extinguisher, and I was talking to this deputy and, and actually went in there and brought both of them out, got him into the ambulance. Um, and then the ambulance people got stung, too. And one of our deputies got stung in the hand, another deputy. It's just, bees are, I'm telling you, be careful when you're out there, especially in these abandoned buildings and sheds. I mean, they're angry, and that's what, and they'll come at you, and they can kill you. There's no doubt about it. So, again, kudos to uh, Deputy Ray Robinson, who led the charge from our office on that. Um, I, and he, he was telling me, he goes, I had a lot of time thinking as I was driving there how to handle this, Sheriff. And, uh, and he it's kind of funny how he said it, but I'll tell you, he did an awesome job. Very courageous on his part to go into there, and he got stung too. No, we he didn't have a bee suit on. He went right in there, and those, those bees went after him too. But scary times, and a lot of bees are out there right now. And people say, you know, just kill them all, just kill all the bees. We don't want to do that. I mean, that's an ecosystem issue. We just want to make sure we keep them. But just be aware, you know, Nako last week, guy similar, doing weed whacking, got attacked, killed two of his dogs, unfortunately. But you just have to be aware if you if you see something like that on your property, you know, let somebody know. Somebody has to do some mitigation there and, and just be safe. Yeah, that's that's the key. It, yeah, it, Killing all the bees is not the answer. I get it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that attack humans. We don't go out and kill them all. <laughs> We really don't. And so we just got to find some balance here, and we got to be vigilant. We know we're in the desert. We know bees are active. What did the bee guy tell us the other day, Carol? Out of the 50 states, they're they're prevalent in 48 out of 50 states. That's right. So they're here. They are totally here. So you're not going to kill them all anyway. But we got to be vigilant with them. And also there was a, a sinkhole in Tombstone. That's kind of scary. New attraction in Tombstone. And I'm, <laughs> nobody's heard, so I can say that right now. But <laughs> new attraction over in Tombstone. Yeah, they got a big sinkhole. And, and we can all assume that it came through the mine there's so much mining in the 1800s over there that with all the traffic and all the water we've had lately it it fell it's a big old hole there in tombstone right now and it's causing some traffic uh modifications 
So the city of Tombstone is asking that, you know, if you have a large vehicle, RV, whatnot, um, try not to use Tough Nut Street between 4th and 5th. They should have that marked pretty clearly for the detour going we around hope. Highway 80. Yes. We hope. Um, because they because the vibration is not adding anything to this um, in a good way. So just make sure you understand your surroundings and know where you're you're walking. You know, there, there was also a story yesterday about um, cisterns or old... Um, wells or or whatnot and they had somebody had a video right out their front door of a ring camera and their kid was just jumping up and down the front yard and just disappeared and the dad had to come and luckily he was there and rescued him out of that big old hole and they said that uh, there's so many of those that people don't know about just like tombstone you know they have so many minds bisbee so many minds so just know your property and just be aware of your surroundings and, and look at the picture from tombstone that's a pretty good size hole that's it just is. not like a shaft opening that's a big old hole so again another impact from the monsoons and then the traffic from the big trucks coming through and so I, i'm sure that's a challenge for the mayor and tombstone and his team over there but again uh, be careful out there look where you're walking last night there was a pursuit that ended in a rollover yeah let me let me just hit on these pursuits they're they're not getting better let me they just say that we had a pursuit a couple days ago uh, our agency we were blocking traffic, trying to keep people safe at intersections because it was coming into Sierra Vista along with Sierra Vista PD, uh, DPS, Border Patrol. Uh, a teenager driving the vehicle, again, they have no disciplines, I'll just say that. End up striking an innocent citizen, running down an alley. He had a stolen gun on him. He was wanted, fugitive, um, this teenager. These are young people, 17, 18 year olds, I mean, but the reckless disregard the intimate danger they're putting on citizens. We had another one last night. We, well, let me just say there's about six in the last couple of days that I can recite to you back. And But the one last night, uh, the vehicle ended up crashing up north on 90, and it looks like it might. It's a very serious critical accident. And a uh, U.S. citizen driving the car was the one that's uh, pretty bad injured. So uh, that's what they were briefing me on last night. But, again, it just continues. It just continues. And... I, I, my commitment is simple. We're not going to yield to this. We're not going to concede to this. We're going to continue to do what we have to do to bring awareness, to keep our citizens safe, and provide justice to those that want to break the law here. And there's um, a multifaceted approach that you're taking as well um, with all of the agencies um, stepping up the media uh, campaign, the marketing on this. And it's hard to say marketing and f uh, fair to yield, Outreach. but that's what you have to yeah. do. Um, to just make sure that people are aware. And unfortunately, it has to be the people who are driving on the roads. We've been doing that. You know, please be aware when you're driving um, that if you see the lights, you have to completely pull over because it's not a situation that you're ever used to, specifically in Cochise County. But there's also um, intelligence gathering that's going on. So we're working on that component. Um, hopefully, in the very near future, we'll have a mechanism in place where people can actually... Um, pretty easily reach out to us to see something say something anonymously so we're working on that and then just following that trail back up so you know some of our complaints have been oh so you got one but how many got through well you've answered that a multitude of times but even if they get through um, people have to understand you know there's there's background and intelligence gathering going on that we've already had some successes with tracing that backwards and making an arrest weeks after the event and we're working very close, and the, uh, it's a collective effort, state, local, and federal, uh, where even they get away from us, or we can't get on them right away because we're so busy with the other ones. <laughs> I mean, that's how many, how much saturation we're seeing here now, that we're driving, and we have teams that go to Phoenix, working along with the county attorney's office for prosecution purposes and law enforcement to get them. So, yeah, just because you got out of our county, you could smile when you hit the county line. But we're coming. Uh, I promise you, we're coming. And it's frustrating I wish I could get them all I mean I know there's people out there saying why don't you get the wow we're a rural county addressing every other crime in the county too and still still we're putting an impact on this but we're going to continue doing that we have we've been Phoenix this week uh, my staff they're coming down in a couple weeks to state again we just continue to put programs and intervention in place trying to make that difference and I applaud our community out there. I applaud our uh, motoring public. They are doing an awesome job, and, and they see the dangers. They're doing an awesome job to work with us on that, not against us, but with us. I know we have critics, but I can't control that. What I can control is that criminal behavior that I'm going after, and we'll do the best we can. 
And we also reach out to our public to give us information and help. Um, specifically, if you've uh, seen on our social media, there was a hit and run on the 20th of July where um, outside JRs in that general area, uh, a truck just ran over a pedestrian and kept on going. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot of information on the vehicle, but if you see somebody with a black pickup truck and the passenger mirror is damaged, you know, give us a call and we can try to track that down and see if that person is involved in this particular situation. Fortunately, the pedestrian wasn't critically injured, but it's something that you can't imagine that you'd be walking down the street one day and just be run over and, and left there. Oh, it, it's horrible. I mean, and that's something you, you see in other parts of the country. It's sad when media now has, you know, here's the crime, the crime videos of the day because they're so egregious. But we're not going to allow that to happen here. I mean, you run over a citizen. I mean, uh, first of all, it's an aggravated, uh, felonious crime. We're coming at you. So, yeah, if you have a tip on that or you have information on that, give us a call. We'll work with the respective agencies, and we'll get that information to them, and we'll assist in any way we can, or we'll investigate ourselves, whatever the case may be. But, again, we're here to put bad people in. We're going to hold them accountable. And so we are here today. Um, on Friday, we want to give a couple shout-outs on this show. Uh, Lori Rutherford from Lori's Place. It's her birthday. Happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. I had the opportunity last night to go to her birthday party. Uh, Mike, you did an amazing job. And now you're putting the print. He put the challenge on every, I told Lori before I left to go. He's putting the challenge on every husband out there because he put an amazing birthday party together for her last night. And uh, But, Lori, thank you for your community service. Thank you for Lori's Place, which is helping so many victims. We appreciate it. Uh, it's Mike's birthday. It's her anniversary today, 55 years. And then Mike's birthday is in a couple of days. So happy birthday to you too, Mike. But thank you for what you're doing for the community. That's right. And so we also have a retirement. Jose Duarte from ADOT is retiring. Today's his last day. Second so. time. Second, Second time. time. That's right. So congratulations, Jose. And just know we're thinking about you. Jose, we got you in our, our thoughts and uh, thinking of you like as Carol said too. And uh, congratulations on your two sir, two retirements. He retired from Douglas PD as a sergeant, now retiring from ADOT. So thank you for your service to the community too, Jose. And Eddie Morales was a detention officer with the Sheriff's Office. Yes, I talked to Eddie Morales Jr. His son yesterday called me and let me know that, <coughs> excuse me, that Eddie had passed away. Eddie had worked in, in our jail for many years and just just the nicest guy you'd ever find. And uh, so sad news on, on that where Eddie had passed away. Eddie, uh, rest in peace, my friend. We're going to miss you. And, Sheriff, what is your stop of the week? Coming back from Phoenix on Wednesday, and I had a meeting in Benson, so I pulled into the Love's truck stop next to McDonald's. So I pulled in there. I was going to get caught up until my, I had a few minutes, so I had the meeting. And I, I noticed this car. It was parked really unique. It was parked in a red zone there, and it was parked just wasn't normal. So that we normally see there. So I ran the plate, came out of the Phoenix area. You know where I'm probably going to go. So the driver saw me and just took off. Just got spooked, took off, uh, went through the light, traffic control device, just blew it right through it. And so I ended up stopping the vehicle. It was a 2013 Tahoe out of the Phoenix area, like, like I said. So I walked up. The guy had told me, we're on Highway 90. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Told me that he was going to Tombstone. I said, well, you missed the exit. That's the next exit. Uh, show me an out-of-state ID say so he lost his driver's license. I said, where's the paperwork on the vehicle? Well, I got that through a social media app. I went and picked it up. This is all collective of smuggling folks. So I get him out of the car and uh, a subsequent search, we found some uh, drug items in the car and uh, he has subsequently admitted to me that he was down here to smuggle. This wasn't his first rodeo in Cochise County. And in fact, I asked him that and he smiled at me. So, but he admitted that, yeah, he was down here to smuggle and blah, blah, blah. This guy also told me that he was a former law enforcement officer from out of state. And, and he had the, I couldn't believe it, the courage, if you call courage that way. He had the courage to ask me, he goes, hey, listen, man, I'm a former cop. Can you, can you do something? Can you help me out here? And here's what I told him. I said, you took an oath, well, oath of office to protect communities in our country. And now you're down here working with an international cartel. You got drug items on you. Let me help you out with that. And I charged him. <laughs> I charged him. He was really upset. He really thought that he was going to get this break in this rural county. Folks, I'll just tell you, there is no rural breaks on this. I mean, 
bottom line, he was charged for the drug offenses. He was told not to come back here. Not that I have that authority, but I said, listen, if you want to come visit and vacation, make this your destination for good reasons, come visit us. It's a beautiful county. But if you're going to come here commit crimes, stay out of our county, unless you want to be charged. Unless you want to be charged. So, um, again, that's my stop of the week, and it's also my safety message also is if you're going to be down in this county smuggling, you're going to be charged. We have a zero tolerance approach on that. Uh, whether we write you, he even said, you're not going to write me. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes, we are. And uh, so he went back to Phoenix and said he'd never come back here again. We'll see. We, something tells me we'll see him again. I hope so for the court. Well, yes. Well, <laughs> well if he doesn't come back, there'll be warrants for him, number one. Number two is um, he'll go directly to jail for that. So, so we hope he does come back, but something tells me he won't. We also have a bonus safety message because tonight Cochise County is supposed to get a lot of rain. Yes, and you see the clouds are already low. I mean, and today's supposed to be a very, very wet day. We'll see if our football game gets called off tonight, Grady. But uh, football in the mud, there's something special about that. But either way, so be careful out there. Our, our grounds are so saturated. Uh, the traction and tombstone sells that. And be careful out there. If you don't have to be out there in the, uh, when it's pouring down rain, stay home. Enjoy the weather at home. Well, Sheriff Mark Daniels, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Great. Carol, thank you. Everybody have a safe week. Talk to you next week. And Carol, who do we have coming in next? We have Melanie from the Sierra Vista Chamber of Commerce. First Watch on KWCD Country is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. It's First Watch now. Hosted by Public Information Officer Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. On 92.3 KWCD. Brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative, giving you an inside look into your sheriff's office. I'm Grady Butler, and with me is Carol Kappas, Public Information Officer with the Sheriff's Office, and our next guest. Welcome back, Cochise County, and welcome, Melanie. We appreciate you being here. Good morning. So how is the chamber going? The chamber is going extremely well. We are excited. We have a big two events tomorrow saturday at the mall at sierra vista so you've been an overachiever i i got to tell people that you know she's just one of these like type a personalities that i want to be when i one day so anyway how did you guess <laughs> yes <laughs> so you have two events tomorrow not just one so let us know about the first one so the first one is our shredathon in the parking lot by sears tomorrow morning starting at 8 a.m we always have a lot of early birds that come out in the morning and get in line before we're even ready and so we decided, well, we'll start a little earlier this year. So it goes from 8 to noon or until the truck is full. And sometimes the truck fills up before we finish. So get in line early again tomorrow morning. It's $5 a box or bag. And it's a drive through event, which we're really excited about for everybody in their cars because it's supposed to be raining. So you don't have to get out of your car. You'll drive through, pay your $5 a box or bag, drive up, and we take everything out of your vehicle and then you drive off we want to make sure people understand um, that's a great service but try to have paper clips or big binder clips or whatnot absolutely you paperwork. have to remove all the clips the binders all of that please before you come through the event because while the truck is really cool and it'll shred a lot of things it we don't want to mess up the truck do we and also this is a great way to protect yourself because there's people that want your information and this is a good way to destroy it absolutely we do this twice a year and we have to thank guild mortgage they are our exclusive shredathon sponsor all right before we get to the next event remind us of the times and location for the shredathon 8 a.m. to noon tomorrow morning saturday morning at the mall at sierra vista over by sears drive through event five dollars cash boxer bag all right and what other event is going on tomorrow so we have our annual home health and business expo at the mall as well from 10 to 3 so this is a perfect opportunity for you to drop off your shredding park your car go in the mall because it's going to be raining and so spend the day inside the mall and visit with our vendors a lot of our vendors are going to be giving away uh, raffle prizes we will have a big raffle prize as well that we're putting together today with gift cards and all kinds of goodies in it so make sure you stop by our booth but we have about 40 vendors that are going to be out there we're very excited about that a lot of those have purchased the larger booths so they have a lot more to show you tomorrow and uh, we sold out early on this one so it's going to be a great one so you, I noticed in the paper you had a big 
lay out with everybody who's going to be there. So tell us some of the people that are going to be there that you can go and learn neat tricks and see if you can get services and see what is actually out there. Well, and because it's our Home Health and Business Expo, there's a little bit of everything. So I'll give you just a touch of some of the folks that are going to be out there. We have the Salvation Army, Mule Mountain Pest Control, of course, Canyon Vista Medical Center. They're going to be doing blood pressure checks. So that's that's a great thing for you to have done. Herald Review, Mr. Fix-It, Be Well Pharmacy, the Douglas Business Network, Dove Security, Assurian Tech Repair, Life Care Center, American Southwest Credit Union, Going to Grandma's, uh, the Sierra Vista Community Chorus Society, Arizona Realty, Sylvan Learning of Central Tucson and Sierra Vista, Desert Eagle Security, Calidora Travel, the Better Business Bureau will be out there. So that's just a few of the ones that are going to be out there, but it gives you a general idea that we have a a wide variety of vendors out there. And the vendors are people that uh, work right here in our community, so you get to kind of explore what is available here, but you can also find out about services, you can find out about products that you may or may not know about. Absolutely. So, and it's great to meet the owners of those companies as well and create that relationship and, and find out more about them and hopefully win a raffle prize. Prizes, and, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so we want everybody to visit the vendors and then come visit the chamber booth. We'll have a couple questions for you. You answer a question and uh, we'll get you into the drawing for our gift basket. So what kind of things do you have in your gift basket? Because you're always amazing at that, too. Well, you have to be 21 and older for this one. That's what I'm but there, about. there is a nice <laughs> bottle of champagne, some champagne glasses, some gift cards to our local merchants. And so there's, there's going to be some fun stuff in there. Carol, I would put your basket building skills up there, too. I'm not sure. Oh, I can I'm, tell you. No, I've seen some of your <laughs> baskets. They're amazing. So that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun, lots of chances to win, lots of opportunities to get some information. So kind of walk us through uh, what a table might have on it. Is it just information? Are they trying to sell you something? What will the vendors be doing? A lot of it is information. They'll have brochures, and they'll be able to answer questions. You know, we have, like I said, we have pr uh, Prestige Remodeling out there. We have Mr. Fix-It out there. And, you know, during the monsoons, we have a lot of issues with our <laughs> roofs and our windows and things like that with the hail and and so it's a great opportunity to come out and actually talk with them and find out what they do what they what they can help with with your home or your business so exact that's an example of kind of what's going to be happening out there like I said Canyon Vista is going to be doing blood pressure checks SSVEC will be out there they have an ex extra large booth out there they're a diamond sponsor and so they are going to be out there talking about ways you can save on energy costs and so that's really important as well for our businesses and our homes and they even have be well out there and, and if anybody hasn't heard about that it's a pharmacy it's a local pharmacy and so that's kind of neat that they're out there you know advertising themselves it is absolutely so they'll be out there so if you're looking at uh, health care or assisted living we have a lot of those uh, businesses out there as well we have Valor Hospice Care we have Prestige Assisted Living we have Bayada Home Health Care we have Haven Health and so Life Care Center so a lot of that information out there as well so a lot of information so remind us again of the times and location for the health fair so the health fair starts at 10 a.m., goes until 3 p.m. tomorrow, Saturday, at the mall at Sierra Vista. And I have to thank our sponsors for that. Our diamond sponsor is SSVEC. And then we have a gold sponsor, Canyon Vista Medical Center. Another gold sponsor, United Healthcare Medicare Solutions. And, of course, our media sponsor is the Herald Review Media. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Chamber of Commerce and what you do. I mean, this is an obvious one. If you're a, a member of the Chamber, you get access to things like this. But kind of uh, tell everybody what the Chamber of Commerce does for our community. So we promote business uh, for the improvement of our community, and that's what we do. I know that doesn't really explain it very well so we'll talk a little bit more maybe about our events so that people can understand how we do that so obviously with our expos that promotes our vendors our local businesses and that's really important for our community to, to support those local businesses but then we also have some other events coming up this year which is a little bit different but because it's a big political year big voting year on September 9th we have free and open to the public a candidate meet and greet and we have candidates coming from all over the state so that will be September 9th at the Cochise College Student Union in Sierra Vista at 530 
come and meet your candidates, talk with them. And then in, for Sierra Vista, September 21st, we have a mayoral, well, mayoral debate and a city council forum. And so that will be at the Klein Performing Arts Center, which holds about two, uh, 1,200, sorry, 1,200 people. That's free and open to the public as well at 5.30 p.m. And our purpose there is our community members can come and speak with the candidates at the at the candidate meet and greet and hear from the candidates during the mayoral debate and go to the polls informed. And also you guys do uh, uh, events like this through the year, but you also have uh, specific, um, what are they, court perks that you can get for being in there. Like you get some advertising, you get some newsletters. Tell us about that level of, of help. So obviously we promote our members. We are a 501c6, a membership-based organization. We are not funded by the government. We're not funded by politicians. <laughs> and so what we do with that is we just change our membership level. So they're a little bit different now, and they're based on the needs of our businesses. So we do help promote our businesses through ribbon cuttings, through social media marketing, through our website, uh, through events, a lot of different ways. And we do offer for some of those levels. Levels. There are additional advertising through Herald Review, and there's just a lot of benefits that go along with that. Obviously, networking, which is so important. People do business with people they know, and networking is really important, especially in our area. So we also offer sponsorships for our members to purchase, and that gives them additional advertising, as you just heard. I just talked about our sponsors for the Expo and for the Shredathon. So additional advertising as well. And you also help businesses get online. Yes, we do. We have a great program called Take Your Business Online, and that is open to chamber members and non-members. It's a free program. Just go on our website, svachamber.com, and fill out the interest form for that, and we will help your business get online and give you free advertising once you complete that program as well. So invite everybody tomorrow for the Shredathon and your health fair. So tomorrow morning, Shredathon starts at 8 a.m. in the parking lot by Sears at the Mall at Sierra Vista. Five dollars cash per box or bag. It's a drive-through event. So that is 8 a.m. to noon or until the truck is full. And the expo is inside the mall from 10 to 3 at the Mall at Sierra Vista. And we hope to see all of you out there tomorrow. Well, Melanie, we thank you for coming and talking to us today. Thank you. And Carol, how do they get a hold of us at the Sheriff's Office? So you can take a look at our social media sites at Cochise County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Mark J. Daniels. That'll be our Facebook page. We have links to our Twitter and our Instagram through there. Or you can hit us up on our Facebook, cochise.az.gov slash sheriff. First Watch on KWCD Country is brought to you by Sulphur Springs Valley Electric Cooperative. You've been listening to First Watch with the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Hosted by Cochise County Public Information Officers Carol Kappas and Grady Butler. Join us again next Friday morning, 7 to 8 a.m. First Watch. What you need to know from the Cochise County Sheriff's Office. Only on 92.3 KWCD. Careful.